Louisiana Legends is made possible by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Louisiana. This important program series enables us to discover, through the accomplishments of our fellow Louisianians, the unique character of a state so proudly served by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Louisiana for 60 years. I have a dilemma. I really don't know exactly who I'm interviewing. Is it Faith Ford from Pineville, Louisiana? Is it Corky Shearwood from the Murphy Brown Show? Or is it Maggie Winters from the new CBS sitcom? Who am I talking to? Everyone and all. All and <laughs> everyone. How does it feel to be back home? Well, it always feels good for me. I mean, certainly, this is a very different circumstance to be back home, actually. I mean, to be honored like this. I mean, I guess the mayor of Pineville yesterday declared it Faith Ford Day. Wow! Which was a big achievement for me. It was very surreal, and, and doing this interview sometimes feels very surreal because deep down inside of me, I'm still the little girl who was running around in the pine trees and uh, getting lots of red bug bites. But I guess, you know, that's kept me humble all these years. Red bug bites would certainly keep a person with some sense of humility, yes. <laughs> Faith, uh, we're uh, taping this program in Bob Dean's magnificent Bentley Hotel in Alexandria, and Faith comes from right up the road in uh, Pineville. Uh, Mama was a school teacher, and Dad sold insurance. And you have a sister who has also had a remarkable... What is there going on in the water in Pineville? <laughs> I think it comes with the generations in my family, and I think that, you know, music was very big in our family. Um, my great-grandpa used to play the fiddle and everything, and we've got all sorts of musicians that we found later on, uh, different parts, of, different uh, relatives that I've had over the years that I didn't even get to know, that I've come to know now that were musicians, and, and I think that my mother's always been an actress, even though she's a school teacher, we know how to turn it on and turn it off. You know, we can turn on the charm when we need to get what we want or turn it off. That's terribly honest. <laughs> it is honest, but I mean, it's a matter of, you know, you can either sort of demand and order or you can ask nicely, even though you really would like to demand and order. And that's acting, you know. I've got to share confidence with our viewers because people always ask me this same question. How does she really look in person? Folks, she's even lovely. A television does not do Faith justice. She's, oh, she's quite, sweet. quite lovely. Faith, uh, tell us about girlhood growing up. I had a very, very simple life, normal life, actually, um, for someone who was raised in the Bible Belt. I mean, my grandpa was a Baptist preacher. Um, my mother was a school teacher. My father was an insurance salesman. Um, we certainly weren't um, wealthy. We were sort of upper, you know, middle class, I would say. Um, we never did without. I never wanted or needed anything. Most everything I ever dreamed for or wanted, my parents tried to provide for me. Um, I tended to think that the checkbook was something that you just went to anytime you need something. Well, I'd go to a grocery store and I'd say, Mama, can I have this? Or go to the, you know, to a, to a department store. Can I have this? And she said, "Well, we, we I don't have any money, honey." Uh, well, no, yes, yes, you do. You've got a checkbook, you know. And that was just the way I looked at it. And she, all right, okay. you know. <laughs> Faith, when did this concept, this vague, I'm sure it was a very vague concept, of modeling or, or maybe show business? I'm sure that hits a lot of young girls, particularly mm -hmm. girls who are pretty or perhaps tap dancing students. When did it hit you? I think my mother helped me with that because I, I don't think I ever really took any of it really all that seriously, but I was tall and skinny, you know, 5'7 and slender. And, you know, I guess when I was around a sophomore they, or a junior, they asked me to be on the Sears 
uh, team board or cool. modeling board or something at Sears. And that's when it first sparked. And then my mother said, you know, she was reading a magazine one day and she said, we should enter you in this contest. It was Teen Magazine's model search. And I said, oh, well, you know, like, right, I'm going to, they're going to be interested in me. So she took me out to a lake and we put on some different outfits and stuff and did some candid shots out by a lake. And my mother, you know, put together this little package and it was very, you know, she designed it and started with a big Today picture. it's called a portfolio. Yeah, but. it was a nice sort of display that she put together, sent it off. And lo and behold, they picked me as a finalist and uh, brought me out to Los Angeles. And it was my first bite at some sort of, I don't know, that other side, that entertainment world. And I can remember I got to go to Disneyland and be on stage and they made this big, I was like, well, this is kind of nice. I kind of like this. This is kind of fun. And it doesn't feel like work at all, you know? They'd interview you on the side, and I never had a problem talking. So I was like, talk, 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 talk. So uh, I didn't, nothing ever came from it. I didn't win, but it piqued my interest. And that's what got me into going to John Robert Powers in New Orleans and working with John and Judy Legrone there. And they said, we want to take you to New York on a, on a convention. And they did? Yeah. So they, they felt that there was some, something there, definitely. Mm -hmm. And my parents always did. Because I was always one to sort of entertain. I always sort of saw life in a different way, I think. I always loved to make people laugh. And I don't know what that was. But usually a small crowd, you know, people, intimate crowd, people that I knew. I never thought I would really be doing it for a living because I was really actually shy. What? I was a little sh I was shy. I was shy when the spotlight would go on me. In fact, when I used to sing with my sister, because we sang in high school and stuff, we sang back up in a band and stuff, and I would sing behind her and I would sing harmony. I would sing, you know, sort of first or second harmony with her. And I, I never liked to sing lead. And the one time I, I took the melody and I sang lead, I lost my voice. Nothing came out. Psychological, of course. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I always felt really good supporting someone. So flash to now, and I'm now not supporting someone on a show. And you are the lead. I am the lead. Yeah. The voice hasn't frozen, though. Not yet. No, it's not freezing, and it's, it's a new territory for me. And I'm thinking maybe this is all those years of supporting, and now I'm supposed to not support anymore. I'm supposed to take the lead. And it can be scary because when you fail, it's all on your shoulders. But I try not to think of it that way. Let's go back. Uh, so uh, you're going to, uh, 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 your mother's sending your pictures about and so on. You're lucky you've got that mother and dad. Uh, I gather there's still your support system along with your husband, whom I've had the pleasure of meeting, who's a, a lovely young man. Uh, so when do you decide you're going to make this jump, though, from Pineville, Louisiana, to New York City? Folks, that's the end. That, that's, <laughs> I don't know how I would describe it. It's about what John Glenn is going through in space right now. Maybe. Maybe even worse. I don't know. But, I mean, I don't know what, I, I guess I went to New York on this convention that John and Judy sent me to, and I really, uh, they took me with them, and I, I wasn't intimidated by the city. That's remarkable. I wasn't intimidated by New York City. I just thought, well, these buildings are really tall. <laughs> I've never seen tall buildings like this before. <laughs> and I think it's really interesting. And everything, it just, it just seemed so exciting to me. And uh, I just wasn't intimidated by it. A lot of modeling agents said, if you move here, we're going to represent you. So I thought that they were telling me the truth. Of course. <laughs> you know, coming Sounded from, good, yeah. Sounded good to me. So I remember going, um, and I said, I'm going to go. And I, at two weeks after I graduated, mother was helping me making phone calls, and we found a place that, would, you know, that, we could, that I could live in. And it was like a, a hotel for women, yes. basically, and other models. And uh, it was called Hotel Tudor, and it was in New York City on East 42nd, which is kind of in Tudor City. It was a nice area. And uh, they came to New York with me, spent a couple of weeks, got me settled in and uh, found a good church for me there <laughs> and uh, got me enrolled in some acting classes and your folks from Pineville are doing all of this 
normally done by an agent, you know, somebody who's getting 15%? Well, my mother was a very good reader. Uh -huh. She read, she read a lot, and she always educated her. She always has. She's, uh, she's a remarkable person that way, and I guess she just kept reading in, in magazines and stuff and finding out where we could go and stuff, and, and that's what we did. And we just went around and we met all these people and we went to these places and these agencies. Of course, none of the agencies who said they wanted to represent me wanted me when I got there. You know, that's how it goes. Did we say we would represent you? Well, you know, you're really too commercial and you're not really tall enough. But there's one little agency agreed to try it out with me and to start sending me on go -sees. The likelihood of that happening is one in what? A million. A million. Yeah. Yeah. And they weren't a big agency at all and they were really different. And uh, they started sending me out to see photographers. And so basically I would go out to see a photographer and say, will you please take pictures of me? Can you take a picture? Do I look like the kind of person you would want to take a picture of? <laughs> Until finally you get one or two say, all right, okay, just pay for the film and we'll take the pictures. And um, that's sort of what I did. And I went door to door and I'd do photo shoot after photo shoot till you build a portfolio. But they never wanted to talk to me. They never ever cared what I had to say. And that's what disillusioned me about modeling. It was all what, it was something that I'd, but that's what I've already done. That's just a picture of me. That's not who I am. And I never could deal with that concept as a, as a person. And, as the woman that my mother and my father raised me to be, I was always one of those people who thought that it really mattered what was going on in your head. So I, in fact, um, decided that wasn't for me. And the doors just kept opening toward acting, you know, and my acting teachers in my classes were actually casting directors. And once I finished my class, they started bringing, they brought me in for an audition, one audition for One Life to Live. And it was to play the part of Muffy Critchlow, which was a, I mean, a very funny role. Um, New England Lockjaw kind of character, very snobbish. I didn't know from New England Lockjaw when she said, Can you do New England Lockjaw accent? Of course not. I said, No, I can't. Oh. <laughs> She said, it sounds like Miss, Mrs. Howell from Gil, Gil, Gilligan's Island. So I was like, I can do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's how I got my first job. And, you know, it goes on from there. But Faith, uh, uh, tell us then this remarkable thing that happened when you had an opportunity and were pursued by the Murphy Brown people. Mm -hmm. You were pursued. You you didn't you didn't think it fit you. you. There was more to you than just a silly blonde. Well, they wanted. Uh, they had seen me do another part on another show on Thirty Something, and then another show that I'd done, Popcorn Kid. And both of them were sort of airhead kind of ditzy blondes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they called me in for this part. And I guess no one else was auditioning for it. And Diane English, who was the executive producer, called me in, and uh, she said, "You seem like you'd be the perfect person for this part." And so I went and read for it, and I had a bunch of fun, you know, and stuff. And I, but I didn't, I didn't really think I was going to get the part, nor did I really, really want the part because she seemed very, again, ditzy. And I said, I don't want to have that kind of image, you know. I feel like I'm just getting started, and I really want to do drama, and I want to do movies. But she called me, and she said, what could I do to convince you to do this part because it's so perfect for you? Which really it was because I... I felt like I'd grown up with enough beauty queens and around beauty queens to yes. sort of know what it was like. And I said, well, the only thing that bothers me about this role is that she just doesn't seem to have any dimension or any place that she could go from here. She seems to be the brunt of every joke. And I said, I have to f feel like she could go somewhere from here. And she said, well, she said, that's up to you. She said, I think you're right. And she, she said, I'll write it for you, but you have to be willing to do that. And I think that that's what I did with Corky. You know, I sort of, she evolved and she grew from and, that. And how many years did that part last? Well, uh, that was, I guess, 88 that, w that I got the job and then I finished it and just Yesterday. last year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Faith, incidentally for our friends, uh, only earned five Emmy nominations, two consecutive 
uh, American Comedy Awards for that role. What was it like to work with Candace Bergen, who had had to compete with a dummy? <laughs> well, she was like working with Hollywood royalty, really. That's the only way I can describe Candace. I mean, she was the classiest person. Um, she taught me so much about other things in life that I needed to know as an actress in Hollywood and being in this business. How not to take things so seriously. How family is the most important thing. How, how um, your heritage. She respected the fact that I was from Louisiana. And she said, hold on to that. Hold on to your roots. That's what makes you who you are. And um, those are things that I think I'll always carry with me. And it's all what I've always believed. But to have someone that I respected that way tell me, you know, because I think that's what's kept her going, is this um, sense of loyalty to her family and the way she was raised and to her father and her mother. I mean, and she's had a lot of problems, you know, just like everyone else has, but she handles them in such a courageous way, and that's what she told me to do, you know, just keep doing that, keep doing what you're doing, and have a sense of humor about life. But you have a great sense of self, mm -hmm. and I don't mean it, that it's, it's a bristling ego, which we run into, from a lot of successful people. It's a pretty tough thing to control, but there is a sense in, as, I, as we speak, there's a sense of self. In other words, uh, uh, you're saying, I know who I am and where I come from. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So the only mystery in your life is where you're going. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, how did it feel then to get the lead in this CBS uh, 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 sitcom? Maggie Winters? Yes. Well, that happened so quickly. I finished the show on a Friday night. My manager came to the show and he said, Faith, I really want you to read the script. And I said, I'm really tired. I really just want to take a vacation for a little while, do you mind? And he said, I just think you should read the script. I said, OK, I'm going away for the weekend. I'll read it at the end of the weekend. And when I mean the end, I'm, I mean, it was the end. I mean, it was the last part. I mean, it was that evening, Sunday evening, I read the script. And there was something about it. I didn't necessarily think, oh my gosh, this is a, the character that I've been waiting to play. There was no lightning. No. There was something about the simplicity of this show and the simplicity of this character that really reminded me of something that I had grown up with. And I thought, well, if anyone was going to do this, it should be me. Because there's something that's so simplistic about coming from a small town, but yet so complicated about trying to leave a small town really? and then coming back to a small town. It can be complicated along the way. So I thought, who better than to tell this story than me? So I thought, if I go in and I meet these people, I'll just put my two cents worth in and see if they bite. Well, they bit, and they were really open to hearing what I had to say about my own experience and how I could bring this to this role and make it that much richer. And um, what I think has happened is that it's become, it's becoming, through my voice, um, the kind of depiction of a small town that I would like to put out there and portray. Because I think that people from small towns and, and, and a small a state like Louisiana, which is a small state, it can be certainly a forgotten state, and I think we have a sense of pride here. Um, people need to see that, and they've portrayed them as bumpkins and everything else, but they need to see the fact that these are people that educate themselves. We are these not are, the Beverly Hillbillies. That's right. Let me ask you this. What's the difference in the responsibility of being the lead in a show as opposed to being a member of an ensemble, as you were in Murphy Brown? Well, in my case, there's a lot more responsibility because, you know, when you have your name on, on the top, you sort of take a lot. So when, when they, they give reviews, it's, it's about you. And, and when your show doesn't do well, it's, it's, a, it's a reflection on you. So therefore, you have to take a lot more responsibility. So when you go out there speaking, and you're, you're out there and you're talking about the show, it's, there's just, you have more of a responsibility to the life of the show. Whereas when I was doing Murphy Brown, it was all about my character and me and my character me. And I didn't really have to worry about Murphy Brown and talking about the show. 
I just had to worry about my character. This, with this, I have to talk, worry, worry about the show and the arc of the show and the stories of the show uh, because it's centered around my character. Faith, let's do an act of kindness. Uh, what should the average young man or woman who's saying to himself or herself, she made it, I can do it, I'm leaving for New York the day I get that diploma, they really ought to go slow, shouldn't they? Well, I don't think you should do anything quickly, and I think that even though it seemed like I did th things quickly, I mean, I certainly investigated a lot, and my mother did, and um, I believe I had a really strong support system. I don't think that you should do it alone without support. It's a really tough road. You get a lot of no's. You get a lot of rejection. And unless you're willing to, if you have a sense of pride within yourself that you can look at rejection as another, as it just means that you're supposed to open another door somewhere else, and that's the way I always looked at it, then you shouldn't do it. Because I never took a no as a real no. I said, oh, you mean maybe later. And that's just the way I looked at it. And if you don't have that sense within you or you don't have someone around you who helps you through that, it's not always the, you know, the wisest thing to do. Wait a little bit. Go to school. Do, do what you need to do. Get your degree. You need to be strong to go out there and, and face... Really strong. And face those... Faith, you know what always fascinated me about uh, the world that uh, you occupy in such a successful way? I don't think people realize when you are your product, in other words, there's no sample case. You're not Willie Loman lugging <laughs> in two sample cases. You are your product. Mm -hmm. When somebody turns that product down, that can get pretty tough, can't it? I know from sending a script in, for example, or a mm -hmm. novel or a play, mm -hmm. hell, they're judging me. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because you can look at it that way. But it's like, um, my husband uses this expression, you can either, either look at the glass half empty or half full. And um, I go in with the approach that I'm there to help them if they want my help. But if they decide that they don't need my help, that's their, that's their prerogative. And You have I, the best attitude I think I've ever, you ought to teach attitude someday. <laughs> well, I don't know, and then in the end, you just throw it all away and say it's not nothing serious, and we're not doing this. We're doing this to entertain people, and it's not all that important. You know, Mother Teresa did important things. You know, there are a lot of lot, John Glenn is doing something very important right now. What I'm doing is just there to entertain people, and if they don't find me entertaining, then I'll go to another person that finds me entertaining, or I'll find another way to entertain. What is Faith Ford's future? What would you like it to be? What do you see? Down the, I think you want to do some very serious acting. Yeah, I do. Eventually I do. I'm going to produce. We've already started a production company, my husband and myself. And um, I want to get my voice out there some way or another. And um, I definitely want to do s serious acting or serious producing. What do you do in your spare time? Tell us just briefly about what's... Faith's life like when she's away from the camera and the crew and people combing your hair? <laughs> um, there is life after oh, one leaves, huh? Well, I cook. I love to cook. I find it very therapeutic. But I must be barefooted when I cook. <laughs> There's just something about that. I like my feet touching <laughs> the ground. And uh, I love to s spend time with my dogs. I've got two amazing animals. They're just, they're mutts, but I love them so much. They've been with me for nine years now, and they're just my buddies, and uh, Tess and Bosco. And when I come home, I love to go fishing with my mom and daddy, because I love to sit on the lake. There's something about, I can sit there for hours. I don't have to catch anything. I just like to sit on the lake and throw that line in the water and watch that cork bob up and down. I just love it. And um, all sorts of things. I, I work out with my husband. We hike. We run. We, we, I try to bike, but hiking and running is kind Do of... Do you watch cool. much television? We watch PBS. We watch biography, um, things like that, Discovery Channel, um, catch up on the news. If I ever have time, but I'm very busy. So. What's your schedule like now as the lead in this in this show? Well, 
my my average day usually I have to be on the set um, a couple of days a week. I'm in at eight thirty, sometimes seven thirty, um, and the rest of the days I try to control that a little bit to where I'm in at ten because I have a lot of traffic from my house. It's a little ways from my house, so when I'm in at ten, I get up in the morning and we work out before work, and uh, and then I go into work. So I'm up at a, probably around six thirty seven having coffee, working out, doing cardio or something, to wake up my brain. I do that for my brain. I don't necessarily look at working out as something that I do for my body. It's for my, it's for my whole psyche. Does uh, memorizing those scripts, and that must be a great part of your life, is that difficult or have you just mastered that, whatever it is? I don't think you ever master memorization. Mm -hmm. Memorization is about focus and understanding and complete um, um, concentration and if you you can be completely memorized and you can know it like the back of your hand but if something's going on over there and if you're a person that can be distracted by, then it can break your focus and your concentration and you have to start over again so uh, memorization is something that's very interesting with me if some things are more are easier to memorize than others you know I it depends on the writing are you still taking acting lessons? When I'm not working, I always believe in studying because I, I, I don't think I could, I forget to how to act. I forget. You know, you forget. It's just like if you were a violin player or a piano, yeah, if you play the, the piano, yeah. you, you, you lose that sort of muscle controlling. And I look at my acting as my body is my instrument. I feel you feel very proud about this state. You love Louisiana, mm -hmm. am I right? I am. That it, it shines through, and, and I love that quality. Right, I do. I kind of feel like I've got like an L-shaped body almost. You know, <laughs> it's it, there's something about me. I'm just, I just have. I my my grandpa was very proud of Louisiana. Uh, my grandpa Walker. He said that um, Gina and Jones Jonesville area was, which was where he settled and. He said that that that, where the, that was the the place where four rivers meet, and he was convinced, really secretly, that it was the Garden of Eden for him. And he, you he, are a delightful, lovely, and very very bright young lady, and okay. it's been a pleasure. And I think that uh, it gives me great joy to bring you to uh, uh, your fellow citizens of this beloved state, Louisiana. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Louisiana Legends is made possible by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Louisiana. This important program series enables us to discover, through the accomplishments of our fellow Louisianians, the unique character of the state so proudly served by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Louisiana for 60 years. For a copy of this program, call 1-800-973-7246 or send 1995 to Louisiana Legends, care of LPB. 7733 Perkins Road, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70810. Please allow four to six weeks for delivery.